magandang gabi mga katropa at welcome sa isa na namang sabay-sabay tayo usapang training at almost there <laughs> okay so ano no medyo marami-rami tayo ngayong gabi at uh, exciting ang ating pag-uusapan ako po si Edwin Ebreo I'm the president the current president of PSTD and CEO of Executive uh, with me are the women leaders in PSTD simulan natin kay Pearl Pearl introduce yourself Hello everyone isa na namang learning afternoon na Sunday and my name is Pearl Martinez I am the global L&D manager for SGS and Co So yeah. AM? <laughs> Ganun ba yun? Hello, Tats, the sure. <laughs> Hi! Good evening ulit mga katropa. Thank you for joining us this uh, Sunday, last episode na ating design and development series. Ako po si AM Villaluz, currently serving as Vice President for External Affairs ng PSTD and also Learning Manager for Mr. Brent Manila. Let's say hi to Marvie. Thanks, Ayam. Hello, everyone. Hello, mga katropa. I am Marby. I'm the lead consultant at Prevo. And welcome to another exciting episode. Kevin? Hi, hey everyone. Good evening. Ako si Kevin Nera, a Chief Equal and Possibilities Officer of Positive Workplaces and current member of the Board of Trustees. Louis? Louis Banta po ng LJMB Training at supporter ng PSTD. Back to you, Ed. Thank you. Thank you, Louie. At uh, so masayang usapan na naman ito. But, pero bago natin pagsimula, pagsimulan yung ating key topic uh, for tonight, siyempre, marami tayong updates uh, tungkol sa PSTD. So uh, kasamang Kevin, uh, simulan mo na ang balitang PSTD. Okay, so para po sa ating balitang PSTD, No, bigger, better, brighter. Patapos uh, lang actually ng ating tipanan. And these are some of the updates. Again, next slide, please. Yeah, so for our March highlights, again, we had our March tipanan. We had almost 115 participants who joined us uh, last Thursday sa Ayala. And there are several ongoing engagements with partners, sponsors, regional chapters, junior PSTD, and syempre sa mga members natin. So, tuloy-tuloy, sa dumatagal pag ilista natin bawat isa. So, ano po, uh, what we can really share is that there are so many things happening right now with our engagement activities. Next, please. Also, of course, patuloy ang ating upskilling initiatives. Primarily, gusto natin i-highlight na na-approve na po yung ating PSTD certification nomenclature. So, if you finish our certification programs, madadagdagan po ng letters ang ating pangalan. In addition, we had three training programs this March. Yung training facilitation early in the month, designing e-learning, uh, I think last week or early this week, and on Monday and Tuesday, we have our training fundamentals. And this please. Yeah. Also, we had our internal efforts. Uh, which which includes some ating human centered design workshop for the national convention committee facilitated by Katropang Marvi yung ating talent development framework review workshops that were participated by a lot of the members here we also released our march newsletter yesterday and of course our ongoing review of our digital learning experience platform na medyo tatahe doon sa ating ano no, sa ating discussion mamaya So marami pong nangyari ngayong March at marami pa po tayong aabangan. So next please. So things to expect and our call to action. First, under participate in an event. No, magkakaroon po tayo ng ating tipanan on April 25 at the Medical City and 300 packs ang tayo sa, ang tayo sa venue. So we hope everyone will be able to join us there. And of course, no, pauna na po sa ating September 16 and 17 National Convention. We already have our super early bird date. So sa mga gusto nang mag-confirm o humingi ng budget sa ating mga kumpanya, pwedeng-pwede na po. Okay. Next. Of course, aside from participating in our events, you can also invite you to upskill and be certified 
On April 16 to 18, we have our training retirement certification course, which will be led by President Edwin. No, and of course, kung gusto nyo pong magkaroon tayo ng in-house offerings sa ating PSTD certification programs, just connect with anyone from the board or our professional team and we'll be glad to offer it directly to you. Siyempre, hindi papatalo ang ating engage, ang engagement sa programs at committees. Sa mga interested, pwede po tayong mag-apply to be part of PSTD's pool of facilitators for our own programs or PSTD certification programs. We're also inviting you to join our PSTV mentor and mentee pool. Kakaroon po tayo ng pilot run for that one. We're also inviting you to answer our research survey. It's phase one of our State of the Industry report for this year. And syempre, we're inviting everyone to join at least one community that is really close to your heart. Dahil marami po tayong engagements for the year. Ayan. So that is sinasabi natin, watch out. Pero na-realize namin, ayaw namin na mag-watch lang tayo. Gusto natin lahat tayo kasama. So be part of the bigger, better, and brighter things to come. Your PSTD is very much active for this year. So join na po tayo. Uh, hey, you. thank you, Kevin. Uh, but, um, <clears throat> you know, I was uh, uh, ano, no? uh, reflecting on the balitang PSTD ni Kevin. And uh, I would like to share my special thanks to a lot of the people here at Usapang Training kasi uh, ano po, no? lahat ng mga nakikita nyo ngayon sa screen ay actively involved in the movement of PSTD, either as a committee chair, a sponsor, or an active uh, participant. Ano? At uh, we're waiting. <laughs> Inihintay po namin kayo na sumali na rin. Ano? At... Uh, makihalu makihalubilo at maging maging involved in all the in push ano no pursuing all our aspirations as a community of practice so tonight we have a very exciting topic medyo medyo nagkaroon lang po tayo ng konting technical difficulty uh, pero nandito po ang ating uh, uh, guest uh, for tonight, uh, si Marby will introduce her. Uh, Marby will do will do the, ano no the presentation. Uh, yeah, just an uh, overview. Uh, an overview of our topic tonight. Napaka init nitong topic na ito. At right. Napaka challenging, lalo na kung uh, <laughs> we're used to traditional approaches to training, no? So Marby, uh -huh. take it away. Thank you, Sir Ed. Thank you, Press Ed. Yes, yes, very exciting topic and. Lagi natin tong pinag-uusapan ngayon sa training, pwede ba tayong gumamit ng micro-learning, right? So, yan ang ating isi-share. Um, I'll just share a few slides, no? Just to give us a context and some definition. But we'll also call our special guest for tonight, later on, uh, who has a lot of experience in using micro-learning at scale. Grabe. So, excited ako ipakilala siya sa inyo in a bit. But let me share with you some information muna, no? Um, about micro-learning. So, let me share a few slides. Ayan. Uh, let me know, Press Ed, if you can see my screen. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. So, let's talk about designing micro-learning. And personally, I have been using this, and I'm sure our, our, our uh, Katropa na trainers here and some of our participants here are already using micro-learning. And usually, pag sinabing micro-learning, ito, gagawa ka ba ng video? Gagawa ka ba ng learning material? Gagawa ka ba ng infographic, etc.? Are those all uh, considered micro-learning? So, maraming questions in mind. No? So, hopefully, itong session, itong usapan natin would um, provide some clarity on what uh, this uh, micro-learning really is. And of course, uh, I think the approach right now when it comes to micro-learning is really to respond to the need of the modern learner. Diba? Sino ba dito ang modern? Ako, modern ako, no? Ayun naman na nating old school tayo. Lahat tayo dito makabago na. Raise your hand if you're a modern learner. O, oh, diba? Pakikimodern. Oh, <laughs> modern, of course. Oo, oh, lahat tayo modern. <laughs> okay? But let me know if you agree with this. Ito na yung mga klase ng learners na meron tayo ngayon, di ba? Number one, they're very overwhelmed with content. Uh, pag pinag-enroll mo yan sa isang course na three days training, ang lagi mong maririnig ay, wala bang ano na lang? Pwede bang mag-enroll na lang kami online? Ang tagal niyan, ang dami kong trabaho. Hindi ko kayang i-consume lahat ng content na yan. Right? So they're very overwhelmed with content. 
they have very very limited attention span oh kasi dahil yan sa TikTok at YouTube eh. <laughs> the, the learners are highly influenced by uh, these things so ngayon dati kaya mo silang i-keep in your training room for 3 to 5 days ngayon one day pa lang no kulang wala na wala na yung attention sa yo okay and they're constantly distracted i'm sure nakita niyo na to na nag-invite kayo ng mga learners tapos pinag un, um pinag attend yun ng zoom session nakita niyo nag email or doing something else there's always something that they have to do so they're constantly distracted and of course learners ang mga modern learners daw then they want to con to have control over their self development okay if this is now the time that people would like to be more um enabled and empowered rather than you know organizations dictating them when they can do train they, when they can do their own learning or when they can participate in a learning intervention so gusto ng mga learners ngayon they have more self control over that and they also want flexibility okay so these are i guess some of the things that we have to think about and of course um, agree ba kayo dito na in our typical work week, there's a lot of things that we're doing. A lot of our, uh, the, a chunk of our time is spent on meetings, on emails, on many other things that we need to do. And guess what? According to um, a, um, a survey, only 1% ng oras ng mga learners ay dedicated to learning. So paano natin sila i-enroll sa isang 6-hour training program, right? So this is where micro-learning comes in. And at the same time, um, these days, learning can happen um, in various points, okay? Number one, pwedeng pagkakailangan na, uy, paano ba mag-respond appropriately sa email? Mostly, ganun na ang gustong um, access ng mga learners uh, when it comes to learning development. At the same time, hindi ako busy ng weekend. O kaya sa gabi, habang nagluluto ako, pwede ba ako mag <laughs> Habang nagluluto ako ng, ng dinner namin, pwede ako mag-learn noon, di ba? Um, o kaya sa desk ko, kasi I'm just waiting for some replies from my bosses, no? While up at my desk, baka pwede ako matuto. Okay? Aside from that, pag break ko, pag lunch ko, baka pwede ko na itake yung mga compliance training na yan kasi later, pag back to back na yung meetings ko, ang dami ko nang kailangan gawin. So, there are so many opportunities for now for our learners to learn. Ang question is, are we making these learning opportunities available to them? Diba? O yan din. On the way to the office. Kasi syempre traffic. <laughs> you can also maximize that time. So this is where micro-learning comes in. So micro-learning, just in the form of a definition, it is a learning strategy so that we could deliver information to learners in small chunks. Ang common term yan natin dito is bite-sized. Right? Bite-sized chunks. Okay? But still... Even though they're bite-sized, of course, they have to be still built on the principles of the adult learning theories. Okay, and um, I'm just going to share some benefits, but you will get a lot more <laughs> through our speaker later. No? She share more tips and practical um, experiences in using micro-learning. So obviously, if you're going to use um, uh, micro-learning, it's very learner-centered. They have control over it. Um, it's just in time. It's more accessible to them, lalo na if you're using a technology that's really, really good um, so that people could just log in even using their phones no? para ma-access na yung um, learning na yan. Um, uses different kinds of materials. It's also time-consuming. And at the same time for organizations, sa atin pong mga company, napakarami ding benefits niyan. Okay? It's more affordable. Ang mahal po magpa-conduct ng face-to-face training. ba, Sir Ed? <laughs> Luby, diba? mahal, diba? mahal po ang kumuha ng mga training providers, training consultants. And if, even if you're doing it internally, imagine the costs involved in organizing a training program. So now it makes it more affordable for people or for organizations and more it, it becomes the learning becomes more agile. And the development also is shorter, ha? Huh? When you're doing uh, micro-learning. Tapos mas ma-easy then i-update yung mga materials, especially if you have the raw files um, of your learning materials. And you can use it at scale, especially if your company is operating in different parts of the Philippines or different parts of the world, right? So, pwede nyo siyang gamitin at scale. Okay, and saan ba siya ginagamit? Of course, pwede siyang gamitin in formal training o kaya kung meron kayong mga su supplemental or mga technical training that you provide to your um, uh, employees, uh, mga upskilling training, o kaya even compliance training, no? Uh, pwede siyang gamitin. And also for performance 
um, support, if you want to provide feedback or additional support after a training program, pwede siyang gamitin yung microlearning. And it can be um, used in different, um, I guess, spaces, uh, and different spaces across the learning, uh, learning um, program. So, pwede siyang gamitin at the beginning of the program, okay? Pwede rin um, a day before the program, during the program, and even days after the program. So, yun din yung kagandahan niya, lalo na kung i-deploy mo lang siya sa inyong learning management system or sa inyong technology. Or it could be a part of a really, really, really big program, okay? And then, squeeze in ka ng mga micro-learning um, opportunities, no? As, as they go through the training, mag mag, mag uh, pa publish ka ng poll or um on the following module mag release ka ng short video just for additional um uh, learning etc cetera, etc cetera. so pwede mo siyang gamitin in different um purposes okay and it can be used for uh, different types of learners actually um uh, for for young um people for young learners pwedeng pwede kasi we have a thinking na baka pagka depending on the profile of my employees eh baka hindi siya mag-work no but definitely micro learning can be very very beneficial depend uh what whatever your demographic is okay within your organization so kung may mga employees ka na medyo bagets like us tayong mga bagets ganyan pasok na pasok sa atin ya tayong mga <laughs> Young, right? Or, or yung mga season, o tawagin natin silang season, pwede din. Okay, but of course, according to study, mas mataas ang consumption ng uh, micro-learning for uh, between, I guess, 26 to about 30, uh, um, 37 to 50 years old according to study. Okay, and I think this is the most trend, no? ng ages or generations that we have in the workplace right now. Okay, so it's really going to be um, beneficial for your organization. And there, there are different um, things that you can do. Um, Nikki later on could share how they're doing this um, in different um, programs. But you can do quizzes, polls. So when you say micro-learning, means kasi ang go-to uh, method nun are videos. But in fact, you could actually use quizzes. Pwede kang mag-launch ng pop quiz in your LMS. O kaya launch a Mentimeter um, survey, okay? Um, you can use polls, quizzes. You can also release infographics where it's really uh, produced in a very pretty manner where information that's presented is really um, very practical and applicable on the job, okay? Pwede ka gumamit definitely ng uh, videos. You can also create games if you have designers who could put together a quick game for your team. Uh, teaching a topic, a, um, a micro skill, diba? for example, active listening, paano pwede nyo siyang gawan ng ganong game. Or you could also do multimedia um, interactive. So for example, in our experience in Prevo, we help organizations develop um, multimedia and interactive e-learning materials. No? So pwede kang maglagay ng um, gamified activities doon, um, simulations, etc. Or you could also use texts, reading uh, materials, etc. Okay, so napakarami pong pwedeng gamitin. And it can be used depending, uh, and uh, the way you select the tool or the micro-learning material that you're going to use would also depend on ano ba yung learning uh, life cycle. Okay, gagamitin mo siya, ba siya for pre-training, for training, or for post-training? You can also think about, you know, the different learning styles, okay? Uh, kinesthetic ba yung learners mo? Audio learners ba sila? Or visual learners sila? So this is, these are some of the things that you can consider. And are there other um, preference uh, for your learners when they're doing training? So, and what are you going to use those micro-learning materials for? Pang process training ba siya? Pang safety training ba siya? Pang nuhar training ba siya? Okay? So you may take a screenshot of this matrix that you see here as a guidance kung ano-anong mga learning materials ang pwede niyong gamitin. So one example is if you're going to create videos, so let's say um, you want to use videos as a tool for micro-learning, pwede mo siyang gamitin um, as a form of pre-training. Diba? Yung before sila umaten ng training, may papanoorin na silang mga short learning videos so that not all of the concepts you are um, discussing pa during the training itself. And then during the training, pwede ka rin siguro magpakita ng mga short videos just to aid the um, the learning. And definitely, videos kasi would be really applicable or would be very uh, appealing to our visual learners. Okay? And it can also be used for safety training and new high training. So ang maganda, no, just a tip, I guess, is to list down 
all the different micro learning assets that you want to build and create your own matrix in your own organization so that you could be mindful and purposeful in selecting um the right you know micro learning um tool or intervention that you're going to design or you're going to create okay so just a few tips Make sure that you keep it to just one thing. Mahirap din yung parang chapsoy. Tawag ko dito chapsoy eh. <laughs> Lahat na lang nilagay mo. No? Nalito na yung learner mo kung anong gagamitin mo. Cut the clutter. So if you're going to present one information, just focus on that and then do it really, really well. Make it brief. Kaya nga micro-learning eh. Kung yung micro-learning mo, ginawa mo rin one hour, di na siya micro-learning. So keep it short, okay? Bite-sized. Um, share that learning um, that took place and uh, bring in um, coaching. Make sure that, you know, aside from the learning materials that you're creating, you're also adding um, coaching um, to your uh, providing coaching opportunities for your learners. Make sure that you understand why you're creating that. Why are you um, uh, using polls? Why are you using videos? Why are you in using interactive modules? Okay. And maganda rin, para rin hindi masyadong na-anticipate ng inyong mga learners yung micro-learning tools that you're going to use, you can vary your methods. Okay. Maybe for this run, you're going to use polls. In the next run, you're going to use uh, videos so that people would also look forward to it. Okay. So there you have it. Just a few information about micro-learning. Let me go back to chat. Baka meron pang um, comments dito. May mga katanungan. Before we call our special guest for today to share naman practical application of micro-learning. Ayan. Sir Ed, I'm not sure kung may... Baka hindi ko ma-open yung chat. May mga... Question si Mentor Maribel. Ba? Ano yung tanong ni Maribel? Uh, What is bite size in micro-learning? Oh, okay. Actually, yun din yung tanong ko rin eh. Ano yung, what is what is short? Like, sabi mo, one hour, that's long. So, what 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 would be considered as short? Okay. So, um, in our experience, uh, and this is based on our own study, okay, with, with the programs that we have been running, and I think there are some um, references as well um, that tell us that when you use micro-learning, it's just, um, it's just, materials or learning resources that they could access in a few minutes. Mm. Okay, so the minutes, so obviously Five, it, minutes. it shouldn't take an hour. Yeah. Mm. 10 minutes, but in our practice, and maybe the others could share their own practice as well, when we say micro-learning, and we ask this how with our learners, uh, gano katagal yung content na gusto nyong i-consume if we're going to use bite-sized learning. And guess what they say? The range uh, based on the study that we did is between 5 to 10 minutes. Yung tipong, meron akong 15 minutes ngayon na spare. Can I go access that? Can I go read that? Okay, can I go and listen to that um podcast? Can I go and watch that short video clip? Okay? So, yun yung, um, um, yun yung time frame that we are working on. Okay, but maybe you, the other um katropas can share maybe si pearl i know she's also using micro learning do you have a, a definite like time for people to consume when we say micro learning or bite size no uh, as you said it, it really varies eh. sa amin kasi talagang maximum na learning is really two hours and it's based on the requirements of operations and production that hindi pwedeng mawala or anything yung kanilang yung mga operators namin ng longer than two hours so even our face to face training it really is yung max na talaga is two hours so when we create when we say micro learning it's actually what we do is we create a journey so let's mm -hmm. say um siguro best example is like the onboarding training that I um created for our Mauritius Team. So, meron silang magkita dun sa platform namin, like Skillsoft nga. Merong, in your first 30 days, these are the different learning activities that you will take. And then after that, 60 days and then 90 days. So, merong ganon. And on your first day, ito yung dapat makuha mo. So, nandun na, kasama na yung yung PowerPoints that they need to get, yung videos, um, yung safety, yung nandun din yung mga policies, pwede na nilang i-take yun. Tapos may deadline yun, parang 30 days, so may deadline yun na kailangan within 30 days. So, 
nag-iiba. So, depending on the Depends learner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so in different... Two hours, ano, Pearl, is that still considered micro-learning for you? Or yung content ng two hours uh, is what we consider micro-learning because they can be paused, rewatched. Uh, kasi so yung... I think that the two hours kasi, it's not that they take it uh, at their own. Talagang mag attend sila ng face-to-face. -face. Uh, Facilitator-led yan. Oo, uh, uh, facilitator-led to. And this is the parang the biggest chunk of learning kasi before they attend, marami na silang activities like taking videos, taking mga anong e-learning sa, sa skills of may mga babasahin na silang mga materials. And then, yung two hours namin na yun, talagang facilitated na lang na, o oh, sige, mag-share kayo. Parang puro breakout sessions na lang yung ginagawa. Just so that they can learn from each other. Hindi yung kasi... So processing naman, na nung micro-learning. Oh, oh, okay. Kasi mahirap din yung puro self mo lang. Kasi alam mo naman yung mental health issues with working from home. So they Are need it. interaction. So kailangan pa rin namin nung facilitated just for them to have interaction with the other leaders in the world. Okay. Yeah. So why don't we introduce our special guest, Marby? Yes, para yes, 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 Presa. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Pearl, for sharing. Actually, may mga practices din na share pa dito si um, Kevin and also AM, yan, parang um, pwede nilang i-access before matulog. <laughs> Instead of Netflix, they could watch it. <laughs> I like that idea. Tsaka one of the, ito yung mga common requests sa amin right now with Prevo, when we, we we help organizations produce, alam mo ang requirement nila, it should be vlog type. Can you imagine that? Vlog type yung gusto na lang ano um, um uh, format ng mga materials and they want it to be really simple really really practical um that's one of the trends that we see also now with um our TikTok like action oh, oh, kasi like. influence eh. influence tayo ng technology around us but anyway let's hear it from our speaker today because it's good to hear how micro learning as as I mentioned kanina it can be used in scale, it can be used uh, to have a wider reach. And guess what? Our speaker today, she's the instructional design manager for uh, Alorica Philippines, which is, you you know probably that she's, uh, Alorica is one of the biggest um, BPO companies in the Philippines. They're supporting, guess what? Around 40,000 people across the Philippines, right? So, impossible talagang mag-face-to-face -face training ka or facilitator-led training ka talaga all the time. And they've been using micro-learning as part of their learning and development strategy. So, let's all welcome our um, guest um, for today, uh, Ms. Nikki um, De Jesus. Nikki, hello. Good evening to you. Hello. Good evening. Hi. Nice to meet everyone. Can you guys hear me well? Yes. 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 Okay. We can hear you, Nikki. Perfect. Okay. Well, I, I don't know where to start anymore because I'm dami na pag usapan and a lot, you know, very good overview of what Marby gave early in micro learning. Hindi nga overview para crash course. So, <laughs> but I think um you know when when Marby asked me to share then like you know what my key tips are for for micro learning, I would really suggest that you know first whatever you do before you do anything, you always do your task analysis first or training needs analysis, right? Um, kasi when you do your training needs analysis, that's when you understand ano ba talaga kailangan ng learners. Video ba talaga yung format? And yan, yung example yung bigay ni Marby na parang gusto ng vlog type. So kahit na yan yung uso, and we think that, you know, it's gonna catch a lot of people's attention, but is that what's gonna improve the performance we are targeting? So I think that really is the, the first question you have to ask yourself. And once you know what the performance gaps are, then that's when you decide how do you do the microlearning. Kaya ba na isang microlearning yan? Or baka it can become like a series, like a five-part microlearning module. So that works then. And um, once you also know kung anong performance dapat i um, gawin or address, then aside from knowing how many series or modules you have to do, um, you also have to ask yourself, do we need to demonstrate tasks? Or are we just really informing people of new things, process updates, 
So yan yung mga but you know where from <laughs> from where I come from from the BPO and daming process updates eh, from different um different programs or businesses. And minsan there are some people who say it's just a process update. It's just a matter of changing step X to step um Z. Like simply changing the email address of the people you are emailing for a concern. Now, does that require a video? So, yun, tanong ko for everyone. Do you think video pa ba yan? Gagawang pa ba natin vlog type yan? Or infographic, okay na yun? So, there's that. And also, uh, very important then would be, make sure there is a follow-up, a follow-through, knowledge check. Now, how do we make sure that itong mga micro-learning, kasi nga, pinaikli na natin sila eh. So, we gotta make sure that the people who were attending the class or taking the course really understood and have no or if they have if they have questions they know who to reach out to bakin lang sila see we always have to have that evaluation piece and <laughs> i'll pause there i'm not sure if you guys have have questions yeah i have a i have a question for nikki hi nikki thanks for Hello. sharing with us today um so one thing is um so your first commentary then, uh, the thing I love about micro learning is that it allows you to deliver in in different components that's attractive to depending on the learn learning style preference of your learner. I know learning styles as a singular, parang um, uh, what do you call this? Um, delivery has been debunked, meaning there's no science that supports na if I yes. can identify as a visual <laughs> learner and put uh -huh. visual yung learning ko, is that I will learn more or retain more. But microlearning allows you to cater to the different styles. So, I think my first question would be, like, how do you know which style you're gonna use? Like, when, when Marby showed us, kind of, you know, we have interactive games, we have videos, have, how do you determine alin dun gagamitin? Um, and the second is you touched on evaluation. And this is tricky, right? Because it's literally two-minute videos, right? Um, or or similar, um, uh, similar, what do you call this? Uh, uh learning items delivered that way. Um, how do you do you measure it per like per release of, of a micro learning, or is it part of the bigger kind of evaluation? Um strategy so get in that things okay i say get um yes I'll, I'll answer the first question you know how do we know right it, it goes back to identifying what the needs are but quick question though um i'm not sure with our, our demographics in the crowd our majority from the academics or bpo or different halo halo tayo parang halo halo tayo halo -halo. Oh, okay. so, meron pa sa diverse, yeah, diverse. Yeah. Oh, oh. yes So yeah, I'll use uh, an example na lang. I, I hope this ex um, answers the questions better. So let's say the, the topic or the lesson or the problem is that we are um, training employees how to sell insurance. And hindi, ba, hindi pa ako nakapag sell na insurance but I've been on the other end, right? Because I need insurance. And imagine if you're going to teach somebody how to sell insurance, you can't just go into and say, um, okay, so first is dapat you ask these things. You have you have to find out if they're your breadwinner, if they're uh if they have family, if they're single. But even before we get into that part, syempre kailangan mo turuan yung yung new employees mo ng product information. Like what are the different products that this insurance company offers and what are the benefits? So that alone, product information and benefits, sabihin natin may 10, may 10 products sa insurance company. Now, do we think that um, kaya i-discuss yung sampung yun in one microlearning. And earlier, there was a question pa na, na para how short is bite size? What do we mean by bite size? Um, there were um, suggestions or if a share that it could be two to three minutes, um, five minutes, may nabasa akong comment hanggang sa mag, baka pag vape ka, dapat yun yung measurement ng microlearning. <laughs> Nakita ko yun eh. Pero, I mean, totoo naman na short siya, no? but for me kasi it really is based on dun sa task. One task equals mm -hmm. one microlearning. learning y Yun yung akin. Because um, even if... Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, normally sa office, with sa work namin, I, I recommend for at least tumatakbo ng mga 20 to 30 minutes kasi yung mga um, self-paced modules. But we also get requests na i-reduce pa siya ng mas mm -hmm. mababa to 15. And ang hirap magpaliit ng content. 
And so, <laughs> and then, but going back dun sa, ano, dun sa example natin na products. So if we are informing our learners how, what the different products are for life insurance, pwede siyang video, right? Um, pwede siyang video. Kung reading material to, tsaka sampu products mo, baka mahirap <laughs> baka tulog naman yung yeah. yung trainees mo kasi you'll also be talking about benefits and and features so it could be a video showing na let's say these as your exam uh, what they call this these are your products and then um graphical representations to make it more attractive mm-hmm. but also pwede naman siyang hindi pwede naman siyang hindi passive learning eh. we could make it into an active learning which means na as the learners are taking the course, they are participating. Then that's dun po pasok yung interactive element eh. So, pwede natin siya going scenario-based. So, in na sabihin ko sa trainees na, oh, may sampung products tayo. These are the features and benefits. Gawin natin siya scenario-based. So, your customer or your client is um, a, a dad. He's got kids, two babies, um, and then my wife, and then both are working, and ito yung income nila. And based on this profile of your client, now, which of these 10 do you think would be the best? So, and sa kada sagot nila, you provide them feedback. Kung bakit tama or bakit mali. And in that case, hindi mo, hindi mo parang chinin si learner or si trainee into reading the products, but they get to make that decision as they are figuring it out. Mm-hmm. Pero, it, um, it's okay. We are incur- It's okay for them to make the wrong selection because at the beginning of the training or the e-learning, we set that expectation that it's a learning experience, that they're not graded. Um, but going back to the second question is, how do you evaluate? So you so the evaluation part would be, I would suggest um, for each task then, so if we, if we decide to have five modules and we evaluate um, for each task, you want them to demonstrate it. So it's the same situation that we have, so you could do the same thing. Going mo ng assessment and graded yung scenario based na, na activity, or um, you could have like a role play, right? Um, and then in terms of sa bigger picture, you would all, I would also encourage you to do a bigger picture na evaluation, and that would mean using the same experience, uh, same example. So for sales, malamang meron yung mga target, right? So yung mga trainees ba who went through that class um, had bigger achieve bigger targets in three months, six months, compared to those group of people who, who did not go through that um, series of classes. So, dun pwedeng magkaroon ng comparison sa ganong performance metric. All right. Thanks, Nikki. That makes sense. So, for each micro-learning, what I'm getting is the recommendation is to go up to knowledge level 2 of Kirkpatrick, which is yeah. the knowledge yes. gain, right? Yeah. But overall, when you're measuring the effectiveness of the entire deployment and strategy, mm-hmm. that's when you can go a little higher. Okay. Higher, yes. And I like how yeah. it, it how Vicky emphasized na task based siya. I think it it become you know micro learning becomes more um how to. Yeah, more how to instead of you know going through a material and then it, it's just bombarding you with information. Right? Mm-hmm. But what Nikki shared is it's more um beneficial to the learner if we use micro learning to uh, to help them perform their task effectively not necessarily knowing everything on the content but them figuring it out and making a decision on what they're going to do when they're presented with that task i think that's a, a really good position of what micro learning could re- how micro learning could really be a, po- a powerful tool right and in addition to that because i mean there are mm-hmm. a lot of Information, of course, that we think as trainers um, believe that the learners should learn, right? Because there's yeah. just so many things to do. And one another example, so we have this bank client and they have over 40 types of credit cards. And oh in their curriculum, they set like three hours just to discuss every credit card. And we said, we, we can't do that because the learners are not going to remember all 40 and oh all God. features of the bank. And again, we are call centers. So, it's not like the customers would be calling for all 40 cards every day. Mm-hmm. So it's about identifying ano ba talaga yung pinakailangan nila kasing malaman. Correct. Agree. You know, uh, if, mm-hmm. if I may, no, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm reflecting on uh, how this conversation is going. And parang there are, for me, parang, please correct me if I'm wrong. 
parang meron dalawang path no yung isa would be yung mga micro learning is really part of an um, ano no uh, a, a a training design diba? yeah. uh, ano siya small yes. component so you can you can di- you can acquire and digest in bits and pieces yung buong training design you don't have to take it in one go and the other one and you know i'm trying to reflect louis on our tiktok experience and then youtube of course is one that is uh, demand driven para kang merong database of all the how tos na mm-hmm. pwede mong i-access anytime yung kasi feeling ko ngayon ano eh medyo mababa na yung ano natin eh yung motivation natin to remember everything di ba yung mga gen x ko diyan tanda niyo yung mga telephone number ng mga kaibigan niya <laughs> ngayon hindi na eh because you know you have access to it Paano na nga yun? Parang gano'n, ano? You go okay. and, and then you watch it again or you look at it again uh, because you have, you have a task ahead that requires that uh, knowledge, ano? But the, meron akong question eh na naobserbahan ko rin because I'm notici- noticing from a demand-driven perspective, mm-hmm. uh, I notice even myself, uh, mas interesado tayo dun sa paano gawin be, rather than the principle or the concepts mm-hmm. behind it. Ngayon, hindi ba, at, can we use micro-learning to also motivate learners to understand and appreciate the principles behind the how-tos? Yun yung, yes. Yung and and I'll give one example then based on what you have there as background. So, yung mga YouTube videos, those are still effective, right? They're very, very good. Um, and one example I could think of, especially if we're trying to build that library, like sabi nyo nga, kapag nakalimutan sa ako pupunta para alam ko yung how-to. Um, let's just say, kunyari, troubleshooting videos. And let's say the, let's say this company is um, selling refrigerators. Tapos nasira. So yung troubleshooting, how to troubleshoot your fridge, yun yung magandang video. Kasi you get to show kung paano siya ginagawa. And I could just simply watch it. I could pause it at any time if I'm doing, if I'm troubleshooting my fridge at the same time I'm watching it. And also, there's a question na parang paano naman yung isa methodology, ano bang tamang gawin? Kasi mas naunahan tayo ng design versus ng principle. Now, in that example, um, I would suggest if we're teaching people how to troubleshoot vid- uh, refrigerators, use images or vid- videos of actual refrigerators instead of illustrations or yung mga um, people would call it cartoonish like the same as uh, Powtoons or ano pa ba? Beyond, right? So they look nice pero because we're teaching people how to actually troubleshoot a fridge, you might as well use the actual product. Mm-hmm. So that's an example of, you know, thinking about the principle first before the design is small. Yeah, thanks for that, Nikki. And the, to add to add to to that, yung point ni Sir Ed kanina on how do we teach them the principles. Kung masyado na tayong nasa how to kasi gusto na mabilis yung information. Um I could see it happening for example in a sit in a, an interactive module Sir Ed. So for example, if you create scenario based um activities kagaya ng ibinigay na example ni Nikki kanina. You present a scenario, they select kung ano yung appropriate na, ta- na gagawin nila, um, how, how to do it. And then, in the feedback, nandun na lang yung principle, Sir Ed. Oh, you so, chose the correct process. The you ch- chose the correct answer. That's the right thing to do because the benefits uh, of um as uh, uh this type of insurance for a father with two kids etc etc and then in that feedback kasi lahat to lalabas naman yun eh pag kinlik nila lalabas yung feedback and then you could also put a link to get uh, to, to review the principle the answer parang ganun like, correct at immediate yon pag access nila dun sa material they select that they get the principle based ako because you they saw the feedback so, pwede silang bumalik kung saan yung mga principles. Oh, that makes sense kasi at that point, they made a choice. They want to know bakit? How, bakit bakit yun yung ano, no? Kung mali yung sagot ko, bakit? Correct. Kung tama yung sagot ko, bakit? Right? Correct, correct, correct. May may question, Nikki, kanina. I'm not sure kung sino. Nakita ko lang sa chat. Ano yung tool? 
na magandang gamitin. Ah. Ano naman yan? What tools can we use for micro, for creating micro-learning? Ano-ano okay, so, yung mga tools na pwedeng gamitin? So right now kami, uh, hmm. we're using Articulate 360. So with Articulate 360 kasi, you have yung desktop version which is Storyline. So if you want to do anything interactive, story, and if you want to also do videos, Storyline is the way to go. Articulate has another product called Rise. Yun naman yung web app. Yun yung mas, um, yun yung may parang predetermined features and animations, interactions, or built-in rather, built-in animations, interactions that you can, that you can do it faster to develop them. So if you need to create modules in a few days or maybe in a few hours, Rise is the way to go. Storyline naman kasi would require programming. But oh, any... More technical skills. Oh, oh, yeah, it requires more technical skills kasi any interactions na hindi kaya gawin ng Rise, you build it in Storyline. <laughs> And then, there's also Adobe Captivate, pero matagal na ako, hindi ko magamit ng Adobe Captivate, <laughs> but, but it exists. Um, ano pa ba? Ngayon, How about for videos, mga... Nikki? For videos, uh, what do you guys use? So for videos, we used to use Beyond. Um, yun. Pero recently, hindi na kayo masyado nag. Nag-Beyond more of a, a branding um, branding concerns. Like, kunyari, our clients would want to use their own colors and whatever branding guidelines they have. Ah, yeah. Pero Beyond is a, is a good uh, video-making tool. Okay, kasi hindi mo maka-customize yung mga assets na eh. Oo, oh, no? oh, yung mga, yes, kailangan mo mag, ano, mag-insert. And then, I'm not sure if everyone has, you know, tried looking into the AI tools. Okay. Ito yung mga, like, let's say, um, Zenerate. Uh, there's Bright. And also, what's the other one? Um, Sim Train. S-Y-M. And then, Train, like, choo-choo train. <laughs> so, <laughs> So, ito naman yung mga AI tools na to. They, they cost a lot though, but they are very helpful, especially in the BPO industry. Kasi, meron ng bot that can help you simulate the conversation. Wow. So, it's like, uh, it's like a customer calling in and then the learner would respond like with whatever their feel they're supposed to say and then based on what they say, mag-respond yung bot. So, kung meron tayo nagawa din sa, sa training, di ba, na parang ang ka-roleplay natin, trainers. Roleplay, so, correct. Oo, mga, mga, mga mock call simulation. So, this time, it's going to be the, the bot who, who does that. So, those are um, AI tools that we all have to watch out for. Dami. Uh, thanks, Nikki, for mentioning Articulate Storyline because PSTV has a course on that. A pl- a shameless plug na rin natin, sir. Uh, <laughs> Designing uh, interactive e-learning using Articulate Storyline. If you want that run for your team, uh, si PSTV, my resource speaker for that. There. Oh, I have a question uh, na ano, medyo controversial. Okay. <laughs> uh, How do we see ano no Cause, because I ako personally I'm 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 old I'm 27 years old no so <laughs> uh, very how modern do see, uh, how do we see ano how do you see how do we see my 27 years in the industry ka na yata <laughs> oh parang ganun <laughs> and the, the, the reason why I mentioned that is because I'm I'm seeing myself uh, ano no be mo, being attracted more and more by micro learning uh you know uh in in my ano no my as i seek uh, more knowledge uh learn how to do certain things uh so the the question i have is how do we see micro learning blending with a facilitator led uh training is facilitator led training on its way out you know live training whether that's uh, online or face to face do we see it on its way out and that uh, everything in the future is really going to be self paced uh you know um curated micro learning uh activities do we see that so yun muna Ka- yung kasunod na tanong ko doon is what would be our advice uh for people like me and Louis uh and a lot of the people here who run training no uh meron baka ma- kailangan na, ka ba- na ba namin matuto ng transition ano from a live face to face or facilitator led training to something like uh, a micro learning uh, or going into the micro learning platform 
I don't think it's ever going away. Um, I think the blended learning approach will will stay here. Because the micro learning, um, think about this. So we offer micro learning any for any lessons na kaya ng module mismo ituro. But there will always be lessons or training that would require instructor led. And believe it or not, we even have clients who have full self paced modules. Kino convert namin siya into blended learning. Because the same example I, I gave earlier, role play. You can do the role play with the chatbots. They are a very great tool, lal na kapag you don't have enough trainers to facilitate role play classes. But the role plays would always be better to be done with with an instructor. So there are still. Um, what it calls activities and types of learning or lessons that are best taught by by instructors. But I do suggest that we always adapt a blended learning approach because it it also would be difficult if we just keep the the trainees you know in our classes um or that's running for hours. And kahit naman instructor led siya, we can still give them um micro learning or self paced modules. Um, so let's say for example. Right now, I'm going to discuss something, and then in a few minutes, I let my class do some self-paced activities. You know, adult learning theory. Le let them explore it themselves, and then gather the class back, and then do a debrief of how things help them. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, meron, you know, as, as I was listening to you, Nikki, meron pang isang sumagi sa isip ko, eh, no? and, and uh, one of the things that I because I don't know if I'm using the right term. Uh, I'd I'd like to think of myself as a social learner. Learner, like I learn through conversations with with others. I I really appreciate uh getting insights uh, from other people, and sometimes you lalo na yung mga self paced mi micro learning where you watch a video, you look at a uh, an in infographics while you're eating lunch or. You know, you have an available time. It's a very lonely learning, you know, uh, mode. Um, I I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this question. Pero ano yung nakikita natin doon? Ano? Uh, yung 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 kasi yung parang mami mami mismo, eh, no? Kapag ka, uh, it's just exclusively me and the machine uh, having that that interaction. I don't know if there's any question there. So go ahead. <laughs> so I think we'll all then that's when we have to go back to the objectives and yung uh, performance that we are training the people. So for example, this what we're doing right now, this social learning is helping us. Because we are all in the training in the training industry, instructional design industry, and we get best practices from from one another. Mm -hmm. But um and also let's say going back to my example, okay, yeah, sales insur um, insurance and sales, right? So if they people want to know how to do better the job, they can benefit from sales learning. But learning how to do sales for the very first time, then social learning may not be the best um, uh, approach there. Kung baga, merong, depends on purpose. That's that's where we would uh, decide do we go with instructor-led, micro-learning, or social learning. And can I add lang that you can actually include that as part of your overall learning strategy. Like in our org, there, there's a Slack hub for all learners. So if you want to share something and discuss that, you could do that. Or you could build like your cohorts, the by your batches. So you could create specific Slack groups for them. So that even if, as you're consuming micro learning or e-learning, you're creating a space for them to, you know, ask questions um and get you know, insights from each other about what they're learning. Oh, I like that idea, no? Kahit sa LXP natin, when I, I, I naglalagay ako ng forum, eh, para magkaroon sana ng yeah. conversation. Yeah. Sana, kasi hindi yeah. natin. Well, that's a different engagement, ano na, one strategy, di ba? <laughs> so, parang ito yung, ano, ito yung topic, ito yung learning mm -hmm. material. Put a forum there so right. that people can share their thoughts or questions. No? Yeah. Compare notes, yeah. Uy, ang bilis ng oras. <laughs> Kaya, napatingin din ako. Wrap oh, up na pala. Hindi ko alam kung ano, no, kung nasagot natin lahat ng tanong mukhang marami pang hindi. Pero, yan, we're out of time. Siguro, ano, last question na lang kay Nikki. Nikki, what would be your advice uh, to L&D practitioners who are 
uh, just going into the the micro learning uh, methods. Ano yung what would be the essential first steps uh, for us? Hmm. <laughs> I think it's going to be ano nga ba? more of research and knowing more people in the in the field. And maybe one name I can drop would be Tim Slade. And Tim Slade. I'm not sure if you guys hang out din sa LinkedIn, but sa LinkedIn, makakita kayo ng ano eh. Like to what was mentioned earlier, na merong group of people, like in social learning. May mga, madami sa LinkedIn na nag-share ng mga micro-learning examples nila and how they even do it. Si Tim Slade kasi meron siyang, alam ko may monthly challenge yan eh, that he would give a, like a portfolio and then ipapabuild niya sa inyo yung your interaction. Ayun. So I think it's 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 looking out for for what examples there are ng mga ng micro learning. Okay, thank you Nikki. Reflections lang, quick reflections sa ating mga uh, katropa AM. Right. So, uh ang reflection ko is that at the end of the day it's always not just about um delivering big programs for the organization. Pero yung i-consider natin yung yung task na kailangan matutunan and yung learners, how they would likely, more likely consume the material in a way na mag retain siya. So those are the, I guess, the top two things when uh, creating micro learning. Thank you, AM. Louis, what's your take? Well, micro-learning will allow us to do more things, no? Hindi naman mawawala daw ang instructor-led uh, uh, segments. Pero yes, use micro-learning to reach out to more people, no? And uh, uh, ano ba to? Mas asynchronous, no? Ang gamit uh -huh. ng oras. Thank you, Louis. Pearl? Yeah. Um, I think isa sa pinaka-important, especially sa amin, kasi nga very global yung audience namin is um I think si Louie naggawa ng isang module dito, yung generational learning. Kasi iba-iba pa rin eh, kung depende sa generation that you're looking at, iba-iba yung ways of learning na maring ngayon, the, the Gen Zs and the, <laughs> tayo kasi mga baby boomer pa yan. <laughs> iba <Okay> yung... <laughs> Gen Z pa ba tayo? Grabe ano? na. <laughs> so, Pwede pa Gen X, no? <laughs> Gen X. Yun nga, yun. Gen, well, iba-iba kasi yung yung way of learning nila. Very fast-paced kasi tayo nasanay tayo. Medyo siguro MTV, di ba? Pero hindi pa rin kasi bilis nung, nung current generation. So, iba yung siguro, that's why you need a variety of interventions when it comes to learning because your learners are going to be multi-generational also. And of course, ibang ways din ang learning. Thank you, Pearl. Uh, Marby? Yes. Uh, ako nga ang takeaway ko is because we, we hear micro-learning a lot like it's a fashion trend. <laughs> Everyone's doing micro-learning. <laughs> Yeah. Right. And micro learning means you launch videos, you um do these quizzes, etc. But I think ang pinaka takeaway ko from here is think of micro learning is it's basically learning, right? Identify kung paano mo i-address yung gap, ano yung learning objective mo and create, you know, a learning experience based on that. All right? So na pag na-identify mo na yon and then that's when you start producing the material. Okay, so it's not really a big difference in terms of, um, you know, learning, <laughs> learning, um, but really more of breaking it down into little materials, no, na ilo launch mo to your learners. So hindi siya ganon ka over, uh, na na parang na over ano siya, na fantasize yung concept ng micro learning when it's uh -huh. just learning, na ba? Pinaliksi mo lang and then must targeted sa kung ano yung gusto mong ma-achieve. I think for, for as a learning professional, that's what I have to embrace. <laughs> Kaya sa ma-overwhelm ako with all the things, eh, ilang minutes, ilang ganyan, ilang ganto, ilang ganyan. Ang daming information. But I go back to my learning objective. Paano ko siya magagawa? Anong gagamitin kong tool so that I could execute that learning experience for my learners? So um, that's what micro-learning means to me now. Thank you, Marby. And uh, ano, no? I speak in behalf of the TikTok 
tiktokerist in the room si Louie. <laughs> in your tiktoker uh, era. Uh, myself. And I think that's the only contribution I have so far on micro-learning. Eh, no? So, uh, nung una, iniisip natin yon to market or advertise. But more and more, we're teaching. Eh, di ba, Louie? And, and di- creating highly digestible uh, content uh, to facilitate uh, learning. And we throw everything on the wall and, you know, see what whichever sticks and gets uh, viewership. I, I think tama ka, Marby, eh, no? Wag natin i- Just go ahead and do it. And as you get better at it, you get more and more uh, strategic. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Nikki, for gracing our usapang training. Uh, bago po tayo matapos, okay lang po ba isang uh, group picture? 